ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸੋ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਰਿਮੈਂਬਰ ਲਾਸਟ ਵੀਕ ਵੀ ਕਵਰਡ ਦ ਫੋਰ ਸਟੇਜਸ ਆਫ ਸਪਿਰਚੁਅਲ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਮੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਵੀ ਲਰਨਡ ਵਾਸ ਐਸ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਦੇਵ ਜੀ ਵਾਸ ਐਕਸਪਲੇਨਿੰਗ ਦ ਸਟੇਜਸ ਹਾਊ further and further along the development we see the change within the spiritual seeker so we see a stage of listening then accepting the teachings then actually following them practicing them going into that meditation learning about yourself and the final stage being the loss of identity loss of this individual ego but the question then comes what do you do when you've lost your ego can we live without an ego what is that experience like with our ego we have a reason to wake up in the morning we have ambition we have passion we have a purpose in life because the purpose is ours so we get up and we've got work to do families to feed that's all things that we associate with ourselves what do you do when you've lost your sense of self identity have you lost everything so what do we even mean by losing yourself If we think about various scenarios in life where people say that I lost myself the kind of things that they say the way that they describe it is that you get to a state where you no longer know who you are of course you know your name but there's something that's now missing inside you you've lost something something that now consumes you has swallowed your identity and in life there are a few ways that we see people losing their identity ways in which people lose themselves completely some people lose themselves in the things that they do their work their job they completely forget themselves and they go so deep into their work their responsibilities even save us serving others you can lose yourself in that you don't know why but you continually stay busy so that's one way that people lose their sense of self Another way that people lose themselves is in their passions. And passions lead on to habits, habits lead on to addictions. And these can be from the simplest, smallest things like shopping. You can lose yourself in that passion, gambling. You can even lose yourself in a book. Have you ever noticed reading a book so intently so deeply watching a movie where you're so engrossed in the movie that the person watching the movie is now irrelevant all the characters all the scenes the plot that's what consumes you so these are ways that we can lose our identity in temporary pleasures Another way that people lose themselves is in depression. When they've lost something in life, they feel hollow, they feel empty inside. They have no reason to get out of bed in the morning. Nothing motivates them, nothing drives them. Sometimes people go into depression without actually losing anything. They don't know why, but they've just lost this drive for life purpose meaning
So they get this feeling of emptiness. So these are some of the different ways that we can see people just losing themselves. Another way that people lose themselves is when they fall in love. That is the opposite of emptiness. That is when they feel so fulfilled by the thing that they're now in love with. You live for the other person. And whether the other person is near or far, just their very memory keeps you alive, keeps you fulfilled. You now live for that person. So that's another way that people can lose themselves. But all of these ways of losing yourself is unconscious. All of these ways are unconscious ways of losing yourself. There is only one way to consciously lose yourself. And that is known as samadhi. Every other way of losing yourself is a glimpse into samadhi. Sometimes these ways that we've described already are unintentional ways that you lose yourself. Unconscious. But unlike the above examples, Samadhi is a unique type of losing yourself. It is a falling in love. It is a losing of yourself. It is a drowning into something else. But what remains is your awareness. You do it consciously. And you remain conscious throughout the process. In Samadhi, you are not lost. In Samadhi, you have found something. You lose your identity, but you find something in return. So this is the journey of the spiritual path. If we think about it, we spend all of our life looking for some purpose, some meaning, some way to keep ourselves fulfilled. What happens when you find that purpose? What happens when you found the meaning of your life? Where do you go from there? So this is the example that we're going to be looking at. When the guru-facing ones have lost themselves so deeply that where they've ended up, by losing their identity, they've gained the whole universe. So your mission in life is no more finding something it's not searching for something anymore. The search is over. We talked about the spiritual seekers who were trying to find the ends of the universe, always searching, always looking for some, something else, something more, never satisfied. This is not that. This is not searching for something anymore. The quest is over. The diver no longer feels the need to explore more of the ocean. For the first time, the diver realizes that there is joy in just being in the ocean. Swimming in the ocean is enough. Enjoying the moment is enough. The diver has realized that the search is futile that the ocean is unlimited. 
So this is the process of Naam. Where Guru describes that we're no longer hungry. We're simply reveling in the enjoyment of our very experience of life. And through Naam, which is that divine praise, the praiser has dived so deeply into the ocean, into that divine ocean, that they lose themselves in that ocean. The river has become one with the ocean. Nadia teva ave samund na janiye. The rivers have merged back into the ocean and the river is now indistinguishable from the ocean. What is their expression? What is their way of speaking? What is their experience once they've merged? This is the beginning of this body. Guruji says, Antna sifti kehna na ant. The word ant means to find a limit, the end of something. Antna sifti, sifti means praise, kehna na ant. The praises, the ones who are saying, or that which they are saying, has no limit. So if we were to translate this line, we would say, end is not praise, praises no end. Antna sifti kehna na ant. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying that there is no limit to the praise that can be said. Guru has already explained about the stages. But the people who are listening to the Guru's story are asking a question. Surely everything that could have been said about the oneness has already been written. Remember in Guru Nanak Dev Ji's time, thousands and thousands of spiritual texts have already been written. The Vedas, the Purans, Upanesh, Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, Mahabharat, Quran, Bible, Torah. Remember Guruji talked about Asankha Granth? There are countless Granths. So, Guru is being challenged here saying, Hasn't everything that can be said about the oneness been said already? So, Guru Nanak Dev Ji's response is, as long as there are meditators who are merged, then the praise cannot end. What do we mean by that? Understand that the merger has left the spiritual meditator in such a state that all that he sees is the ocean now. All that he can see is the divine. Everything that he interacts with is an interaction with the divine. The one doing the interaction and that which is being interacted with is a conversation of the divine. Nam now becomes everywhere. Nam is the conversation that is happening. So if everything that is happening is Nam, then everything that is being said and every experience that is being had by that meditator is Sifti, is praise.